Hi, I'm Jenny K. Parks, and I'm walking through this beautiful quilt behind me from Fonz and Porter. It's their block of the month quilt. It's just gorgeous. And we're going to cover two blocks today. We're going to cover Sarah's Choice and a star and a star block. And I'm going to show you how to do half square triangles and flying geese. So I've got some good, and I've got some good tips for you that I'm going to share along the way. Very exciting. We're going to start first with the Sarah's Choice block. And it can, it can kind of look complicated. In fact, a lot of the stuff that you're going to see looks complicated. But you know what? You can do it. And I'm going to show you how you're going to get good results because I want you to succeed. I want you to do a good job. So starting with this one first, we're going to start with making, um, with making a flying geese. And so we start with just a block like that, simple block here, and then we're going to put these corners. And this is going to make four flying geese at one time instead of one, one block of one unit of flying geese at a time. This is going to make four, which is going to be a nice time saver for us. So I put these two here and I line them up there, right? And then you can see on the second one, I've drawn on here with the red pin and then I stitched over that line and I used, this tool is so cool, I used this ruler here to draw along the line. And what it does is that, that shows you your stitching line. You're gonna stitch exactly on that line, see? That's pretty simple to do. You just stitch right along there. It looks great. Now, I'm gonna cut this apart on our seam allowance. Leaving the quarter inch seam allowance as always. I'm gonna line this part right up here on my quarter inch, on, on my stitching line that I made, and it'll give us a quarter inch right in the middle. Huh, pretty clever. All right, and you can say, I don't know how you're going to get a um, flying geese out of this, but we're going to get four, and it's going to be great. Now I'm going to take that apart. Huh. I know it doesn't look like it yet, but this is, this is going to be really good. I'm going to bring it over here to the iron, and we'll press it. I like to press the seam down and press the thread, kind of. I want to tell it which direction it's going to do, kind of get it heads up. This is the direction you're going to go, and this is what you're going to do now. And no shilly shally here. We're going to do it. All right. So there you go. I love, it looks so cute that way. I think that's adorable. Looks like little mice or something. All right. So then we're going to take it to the next step here, and that's doing more of these blocks just like that. I like to take and sit down and put all the lines on at one time. I think the more often you do the same thing over and over again, the better results you're going to get, the more accurate you're going to be at it. I, I just think it's a better way to do it. So I would sit down and like draw all the lines in one sitting, or before I go on to anything else, I would take care of all the lines in one sitting. So I've drawn those lines, and then I'm going to stitch it just like that, see? And then, of course, we cut it. So I'm going to cut along that line. See, I've lined it up on the quarter of inch on my red stitching line, and the ruler is going top to bottom, right through the middle. Cut it again. Voila, voila. And we got that other part on there, and it's great. We are good to go. Look at that. Ta da! I've heard people ask the question, where are these geese going to and why are they in such a hurry? I don't know, but it's called flying geese and there you are. Okay, so that's for this, that part of the block. Now we need to worry, oh, let me bring this out here so you can see it again, see what I'm talking about here. Now we need to worry about what's going on here in the center. And we have half, squared, half quarter triangles in the center of our block. So we're going to make some of those and take the two fabrics right sides together, and line it up nicely. Now, as I'm going through, I, I've done this a lot before. I don't always remember to pin, because I don't care. I mean, because <laughs> I, you know, you just get used to it, you get in the habit of it, and it's not so much of a worry. But you pin to the level that you feel comfortable with. If you want to put a lot of pins, that's fine. I've taught some gals that have some physical, physical issues and stuff, and they really need to pin, they can't hold it steady, and that's fine. Do what, do what you got to do. Do what's going to work for you. So on the lighter color, you see, notice I did it on the lighter. Sometimes you get a fabric that 
it's dark and no matter what color you draw on there with your pen, you can't, it can't, it won't show really well. So just be aware of that. That can happen sometimes. So when you can use a light side, huh, two, so sensible. So you see, I just drew the lines there and I stitched down both sides. And now I'm going to cut that fella in half and it's going to create two half square triangles. Like so. Look at that. I love it. Press towards the dark in this, in this whole series unless there's a note that says otherwise. I always think you press towards the dark. Oh, I'm, I'm clipping the little dog ears off here just in case. We don't need that extra stuff. We want it to look nice and finished. Okay, so you can see, oh, I'm gonna clip this part off here too, as well. All right. You can see how these are gonna go in here to create our little pinwheel effect that's in the middle of this Sarah's Choice block. So let me lay this out for you and kind of see how it will all go together. And just think when you're putting the block together, think in segments, right? You're gonna do kind of this section and then this section and this section and then you put them all together like that. Okay, so you can see how that flying goose is gonna go up there. How these pieces will go, whoop, Turn that around there. You gotta be careful, I'm telling you. I always have the image right next to me to make sure I don't get things upside down and backwards because I would be likely to do that. And so you'd make that square and then we do both ends there like so. And then you'd also make these segments over here. So we have these just plain blocks that would attach at the end there. Now one thing to think about that always becomes an issue with triangles, and I know this was a big one for me while I was learning how to do stuff like this, is when I'm piecing it, where, where do I have to make sure I stitch? Where do I have to make sure it's gonna be accurate and I'm not gonna lose my points and it's gonna look good? Because I think that you know the points, that's the whole point of the triangle, right? You wanna make nice looking points that are gonna be perfect. So, what I say, my adage, and what I figured out through painstaking trial and error, I mean, not that I've actually made any mistakes with it, I just want to, you know, help you out there, but what I've learned is that the X marks the spot. So, you can see here I have my red stitching line. I'm going to draw a red over the stitching line from the other, because they went the other direction. So you can see it creates an X. X marks your spot. You want to stitch exactly over that spot in the X, and then everything will fit together. You won't lose those little points. So that's my trick for you today with this one. All right, so let me show you the next block here. We have, it's called a star in a star block. Isn't that pretty? So we've already learned how to make the flying geese, and really we're just doing the same thing adding those additional blocks on the corners like we did in the other one. Oh, let me turn this around. I like to see the flowers, uh, the things going in the same direction upward so it looks like it's, I don't know, it seems like it should be that way. Um, so what we need to do then is we need to make these smaller ones. So if you were working on the first video, you've already tried a couple of the flying geese, a couple different ways to do it, and now we're just gonna make them and they're gonna be a little smaller, and you know what? the same techniques are still gonna work. Let me show you. And they're so cute. I love it when they're all small and cute. So there. You will get all the cutting instructions and all the sizes that you need to um, from Fonz and Porter. You'll be able to get all that information for them so you can get it in the exact sizes. So it's using that same method, we're gonna put our lines Draw our lines right there through either side, and that's what we stitch on, and then we can cut that apart. 
And if you cut it apart, you've got these little fellas here. And you continue on, see, same verse. Second verse, same as the first there. And then you split it apart again, and you get these cute little, oh, they're just adorable. So let me show you how this center, center part is gonna go together. Oop, I have that upside down, there we go. See, that's why I always have that part right next to me. So I can see it, I can get read the visual that's supposed to be there. Oh, look at that. And I will always lay stuff out before I start to put the block together. There's no shame in doing that. You do what you need to do to make things work out just right. So we would take little blocks up here like that. Let me pull these fellas out of here. And you're gonna get a segment that's along those lines. And sometimes I get frustrated and I don't wanna to have to take the time to cut the little, cut the little dog ears off but you want to, you'll want to, and you'll want to trim stuff up. If there's any wayward edges that are gonna cause you problems, you want to get them out of the way. You'll get better results that way. So you can see, voila, look at that. <laughs> so that's our little center part. That's our star within the star. All right, next part, you can see it's bigger. We've already conquered the little one. We can definitely do the bigger one, right? Of course we can. Of course. So there we take very simple, just like we did before. And you stitch just along those lines, and then we're gonna cut that open. And let me show you that. I'm gonna cut through that one time for you. I want you to see a top to bottom. And sometime, sometimes when you're doing this, your line might get a little bit off, but if I, am absolutely certain to cut from the upper left down to the lower right. If I cut across like that, then I know it's gonna be pretty good. I am not a big fan of ripping out. Well, who is, really? But my philosophy is this, let's go forward, figure out what made that mistake, and then let's learn a new way to do it the next time. All right, cut that across. And then we just press those up, pressing to the dark. Look at that, I just love it. Okay, so you'd continue on in the same manner that we did the other one there. You've got your little fellas there all stitched on and ready to cut apart. See, there we are, ta-da! I think that's so cool. That's so much easier than just doing it one block or one, one segment at a time to do it with this four patch, it's really nice. Okay, so now we're just gonna, I'm gonna show you how the whole thing goes together, right? I had that small segment, and now we're gonna put these two ones on there, that on there, look at that. Look at that. And then that all stitches together. Whoops, look at that. I'm gonna fix that so it's right side up there, huh? Talking about directions, I better fix mine. All right, so that's it for today. We've covered Sarah's Choice and we've covered a star and a star block. We've learned how to do some half square triangles and how to do flying geese. Next time, I'm gonna have two more blocks for you and two more tips as we work through the Fonz and Porter Block of the Month quilt with the Benner Text fabrics. So I'll look forward to seeing you then. Tune back in.